Hello, hello. Today we're going to be talking about the virus. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Instead, there's new proof for creation and against evolution. What could it be? I'm so excited. We were created with what is known as created heterozygosity. And this is easily explained with the genetics, which I will prove. Evolution tells us that we evolved from primates in Africa. Specifically, it's what's called the L node. It's a haplogroup, and that all humans descended from them and spread around the world. Interesting that you would mention haplogroups specifically. For anyone that doesn't know, these are allele groups identified by the same SNPs. The oldest haplogroup, L0, traces back to East Africa. I'm just surprised at this, because usually creationists don't have enough science knowledge to know what haplogroups are. Carry on. Well, the Bible is very different. It says that man was created specifically in the Middle East and in the Fertile Crescent. Which would I believe? An ancient book translated and telephoned for thousands of years or hard provable science? You know, another thing I realized is that many people like to compare these two ideas side by side as if they have equal value. On one side we have Africa, on the other side we have the Middle East. Which side do you belong in? It'd be more accurate if it were something like, humans came from Africa. It's a hard proven fact. Oh, and there's this group of people who think humans came from the Middle East. Well, what do people look like who live there? Well, they have brown skin. Why would they have brown skin? I mean, I guess it's up to your own interpretation, and it conveniently lines up with your argument later, but still. Isn't this sort of a premise you set up without any good justification? Evolution says that man arose in deep Africa at the L node, which would have made them have black skin. Just like all Africans. What does science tell us about skin colors? Well, skin color, or melanin, is governed by multiple genes, and genes come in two pairs. Two from each parent are inherited, just like letters in the alphabet. That's such a crazy simplification. There are hundreds of genes that play a role in determining skin color, and each of these genes may not just, quote, come in two pairs. I mean, I know we're used to this from our high school studies, but that was just a simplification on how it works. In reality, it's a lot more complicated, especially for something like skin color. But let's hear what you have to say. Let's look at A and B right now. As genes code for large amounts of melanin, our capital letters A and B. Where is this coming from? Where are you getting this? This can't even begin to describe how skin color is inherited. Not only are hundreds of genes involved, many of them cannot be represented by a simple pair of alleles. Alright, I'm sorry. I'll wait until the point is finished before I make a proper response. As where lowercase a and b will represent low melanin in the skin. So pale white people. Therefore, black skin races can only carry capital letter genes. Capital A, capital B, capital A, capital B. They can only ever produce more black skin people. Just like white people, which carry all recessive lowercase gene letters and can only ever produce low amounts of melanin children. So Adam and Eve had to have, have been brown skin people. Therefore, to be able to code all the different skin colors for the people that we see on the earth today. So even simple genetics proves the out of Africa theory is wrong and proves that the biblical created heterozygosity model is true. Long rant incoming. So there are many problems with this hypothesis and I'm going to point them out. Like I said earlier, you've completely simplified skin color to something that doesn't even represent reality anymore. You cannot say that only A and B alleles represent it, and not all the genes that control skin color can be simplified to a pair of alleles. If, for example, every single gene only had two alleles, then your argument would make more sense, but that's simply not the case. Therefore, if I can point out even just one gene that codes for skin color and has more than four different alleles, your idea would be entirely disproven. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Take the MC1R gene, for example, which is a membrane receptor responsible for skin and hair color. This gene itself has way more than four alleles. How do we know how many alleles? Well, you can have an estimate based on how many variations it has. Just on Snippedia, we've identified 18 single nucleotide polymorphisms alone. But that's not all the variants available, since SNPs are just one type of them. A paper published in 2005 has identified over 60 different variations of MC1R. That equates to potentially 60 different alleles for the gene alone. Now, if you're wondering how variants have anything to do with alleles, I'll explain that briefly. As we know, when time passes, DNA can be modified through mutations, translocations, and transposons. This results in genes to have multiple variations. Assuming that everyone had exactly the same DNA sequence for everything, which by the way isn't necessarily true, but we'll assume that for the sake of argument, different individuals will undergo different mutations. They're random after all. So let's say for gene 1, someone had a mutation that turned a G in position 20 to a T. Then for someone else,
else, they turn that same G into an A. Or maybe someone else doesn't even have a mutation there, but had a mutation elsewhere, say position 50. Then there's someone who ended up having DNA repeats inserted into the gene, creating a copy number variation. Doesn't matter what kind of changes there are, these are called variations. Assuming we take the original DNA sequence as the consensus strand, every mutation is a variation. Then, let's say these people who had variations reproduced and passed down their variations to the next generation. We'll have different groups of people with different variations, but these groups of people can mix these variations together if they just reproduced with one another. Over time, you'll have a population with multiple variations that become common. Not all variations make it through the generation since they could be detrimental and be weeded out through the process of natural selection. Now here comes the juicy part. Each variation could technically be thought of as an allele. If you don't know why that's the case, allow me to explain. When someone gets a mutation, it will happen on alleles. Let's say someone had a capital A and a lowercase a for a particular gene. The mutation will happen on either the capital A or the lowercase a. Let's say it happened on the lowercase a and it turned into lowercase b. This individual will now have capital A and lowercase b. But when this mutation happened, it only affects this one individual. Other individuals that did not have the same mutation, which they most likely won't, will still have capital A lowercase a. Now look what has happened. We now have three different alleles. Then say another individual somewhere else had a different mutation and turned the lowercase a into lowercase c. Now we have four different alleles. This process continues, gets passed down through generations and through the power of natural selection, some gets weeded out while others get added to the gene pool. Depending on the gene function and random chance, we can end up with multiple different alleles. MC1R is one of those genes that control skin color and currently has over 60 different alleles in humans. Now let's see how that disproves your hypothesis. If we start with Adam and Eve, in the beginning that only makes two people. At most, they can only hold four different alleles since you can only hold two alleles per person. That's nowhere close to being able to provide 60 different alleles in our human population today. In a time scale of a few thousand years isn't nearly enough for mutations to accumulate and spread throughout the population. What about evolution? How does evolution explain this? Turns out it matches quite well. We've had hundreds of thousands and millions of years of human evolution. This is plenty of time for alleles to develop and give MC1R the 60 alleles it has today. But MC1R isn't even the only gene. Remember, this concept does not only apply to those that affect skin color. Any gene that has more than four alleles would disprove the idea of Adam and Eve. The human gene HLA has so many different alleles, they even have their own naming system. Now, I don't know how many it has exactly, but it's somewhere in the thousands. Try to disprove that, creationists. Anyway, that's my time. Thank you to Fireshard, Liam, Don Jessica, Joe Goldenberg, and JN once again for your loyal support over at Patreon. I'll see you next week.